home of Wolverhampton Wanderers. 39 years on, a restaging of that famous match marked the opening of a new look Molyneux. Reporting, Gerald Sinstead. In the 1950s, everyone was afraid of the big bad wolves. Wolverhampton Wanderers devoured opponents. They were pioneers and buccaneers. They played a long passing game that released fast raiding wingers, and their floodlit confrontations with the best in Europe captivated the nation. Smith. Johnny Hancock. Johnny Hancock must score. This week, they were all back again under the Molyneux lights. The stars of yesteryear come to honour and be honoured at the start of a new era for Wolverhampton. They were recalling Wolves v Honved, Felink Pushkash versus Billy Wright, played 39 years ago and still vivid in the memory. The Hungarian champions Honved challenged Wolverhampton Wanderers at the Molyneux ground Wolverhampton. Nearly 60,000 watched the Wolves kick off. Straight away, they're attacking up the right wing, showing the courage that swept them to victory over Spartak. I think it's one of those games that um, st uh, stick with you for the rest of your life. I mean, when you read in the, uh, some of the manuals or some of the football books, ten of the greatest games, and this is one of them, it must be one of them, then it, it, it was an honour to have played, isn't it, yes? Makos leads the visitors upfield, but Williams is there. The Shorthouse takes up the running. The Hungarians seem to settle down first on the mud pie pitch. I only remember it for a fantastic game. I remember it for uh, sitting back in amazement at the way Honved played in the first half. Good eye, number seven, and Flowers give chase. The ball wraps Flowers' hand and referee Griffiths awards a free kick to Hungary. Did he handle it or didn't he? No time to argue now, for Puskas takes the kick and Coxis heads it home. Where were you when they scored their goals? On the pitch somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, whisk across, I and mean, Kosic was brilliant in the air. Absolutely brilliant. He was a, a counter for Puskas. Puskas got the skill with the shooting ability. Hidikuti pulled this away because of the deep line of the way he played. But Kosic was always on that far post, and if you hadn't got behind him or level with him, he was jump. He always jumped at the right time. The ball goes to Coxis. On to Makos. Billy Wright's in pursuit. 2-0 is the half-time score. This particular game, I can assure you, that when we went in at half-time, I said to the players, now look, you go out and play the same as you played the first half, and I'll be well satisfied. Wolves right back, Stewart sets his team off once more. Now incident number two as Kovacs obstructs Hancock's in the penalty area. A penalty, says the ref, and Hancock's takes it. How much do you remember of your two goals? Well, I got two in one minute, you know, which uh, come my memory a little bit, but um, yeah, the, uh, the first one I headed, I believe, I think the cross came from uh, the left wing. Just coming up now into the hard red penalty area, squares in. Who's going to put it in? Trenburn! A goal! As Trenburn's got number two! Here come Wolves again. Right from the Hancock, he shoots! He's scored! He's scored! He's scored! Actually, Wolves' winner was a second for Swinburne, but the error was pardonable. It was a night of almost unprecedented excitement. For this, remember, was only a year after England had been bewildered by Hungary at Wembley. Let's have a look now at one of the most modern rooms in the Wolves, in probably, probably in British football today, and that's the physiotherapy room. Wolves have rekindled that old intent to live with the best. Now, once again, the physio runs a treatment area equipped with all the latest aids to healing and recuperation. The workout room, where the players of the 50s toned their muscles and developed their strength, has been replaced by a state-of-the-art gymnasium. And all this in a now completely rebuilt stadium, the realisation of a long-cherished dream. This is a model of the new ground, isn't it, Mr Baker? Yes. What's the present uh, capacity here at Molyneux? Uh, roughly 55,000. And what will the new ground hold then? Uh, just over 75,000. But years passed, models gathered dust, and no plans were approved. The club's fortunes waned. Molyneux was being choked by the weeds of despair. When Sir Jack Hayward bought control in 1990, it was on the point of being condemned. Three years and £15 million later, Molyneux has been transformed by his generosity. This doesn't make business sense at all. My American friends, when you know, it comes out that I own a football club. They all think it's like the Los Angeles Rams or the 
Atlanta Vikings or whatever they are, and they all, of course, make huge money. They swap hands for hundreds of millions of dollars. And they all say, my God, you, that's fantastic. You're in a football club. How much money do you make? And I say, nothing. It's all going down the drain. And of course, you'll never recoup what's been put into this ground. And we'll just have to wipe the slate clean and then try and run it as a viable going proposition as a football club. I think for Father, it was a, uh, the start of a dream come true. We're obviously, the, the, the team are not where we wanted to be yet, but this is part of the, the finish of the dream. Uh, and we want it just to go on from here and hope this is the start of a great new era for Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club. Sadly, the brave new world was not revealed with the brilliance intended. A power failure deprived the match of full floodlighting. It didn't spoil the celebration, though Honved, mindful of times past, were not averse to changing the script. His Van Vinci put them ahead on the half hour. But the niceties were preserved when David Kelly met Robbie Dennison's free kick and Andy Thompson followed up to equalise. One apiece at the end, it was the appropriate result for the occasion. This was party night. Everyone should go home happy. A time for presentations, for souvenirs and autographs, and the cementing of friendships. Time for a lap of honour for Sir Jack, and how many club principals enjoyed that. This was indeed a night when the Wolves lived up to Wolverhampton's motto. Not long ago, the liquidator loomed at Molyneux's gates. Now he figures only in the club's theme tune. The glory days will never be forgotten, but on Tuesday night, the future looked good. Wonderful, a new dawn at Wolves, thanks to Sir Jack. I don't think it'll be long before they're really back. But none as significant as last night's official opening of the new stadium. After years of decline and neglect, Wolverhampton Wanderers are finally on course to reclaim their former glories. When you've watched your club twice go bust and your team relegated to the fourth division, you've every right to celebrate a new dawn in style. 28,500 came to fill the refurbished Molyneux. They may need to build an extension before too long. Absolutely terrific, yeah, wonderful. What a sight. I mean, there isn't a vacant seat anywhere. Absolutely terrific. It was Sir Jack Hayward's money that made it all possible, but former chairman Jack Harris was given the honour of opening the stand that bears his name. I think possibly next to the, to the day that I got married is the greatest single event in my life. It was nearly 40 years ago that Wolves beat Honved in a classic footballing encounter. Those players were invited back last night, and some, like Billy Wright and Ferenc Pushkas, still share a personal friendship. Hunved christened the new stadium with a goal after just half an hour. And in the time-honoured tradition of Molyneux fightbacks, Wolves equalised in the second half through Andy Thompson. A moment to savour for Sir Jack Hayward. The match finished in a diplomatic draw, but the celebrations continued well into the night. It's taken 14 and a half million pounds to spark life back into this famous old ground, and on last night's performance, it's been worth every penny.